The Songs of Distant Earth is a 1986 science fiction novel by British writer Arthur C. Clarke, based upon his 1958 short story of the same title. He stated that it was his favorite of all his novels. Clark also wrote a short movie synopsis with the same title, published in Omni magazine and anthologized in The Sentinel in 1983. The novel tells of a utopian human colony in the far future that is visited by travelers from a doomed Earth, as the sun has gone nova. The Songs of Distant Earth explores apocalyptic, atheistic, and utopian ideas, as well as the effects of long-term interstellar travel and extraterrestrial life. Topic. Plot summary The novel is set in the early 3800s and takes place almost entirely on the faraway oceanic planet of Thalassa. Thalassa has a small human population sent there by way of an embryonic seed pod, one of many sent out from Earth in an attempt to continue the human race before the Earth was destroyed. The story begins with an introduction to the native Thalassans, the marine biologist Brandt, his partner Marissa and her brother Kumar. They are typical examples of the Thalassan culture, quiet, stable, and free from religion and supernatural influence. Their peaceful existence comes to an end with the arrival of the Magellan, an interstellar spaceship from Earth containing one million colonists who have been put into cryonic suspension. In a series of descriptive passages, the events leading up to the race to save the human species are explained. Scientists in the 1960s discover that the neutrino emissions from the Sun, a result of the nuclear reactions that fuel the star, are far diminished from expected levels. At a secret session of the International Astronomical Union it is confirmed that the problem is not with the scientific equipment, the Sun is calculated to become a nova around the year AD 3600. Over a period of centuries humanity develops advanced technologies to send out seeding ships containing human and other mammalian embryos and later on, simply stored DNA sequences, along with robot parents, to planets that are considered habitable. One such ship is sent to the far-off ocean world of Thalassa and successfully establishes a small human colony in the year 3109. Sending live humans is ruled out due to the immense amount of fuel that a rocket-propelled spacecraft would have to carry to first accelerate to the speeds required to travel such great distances within an acceptable time, and then decelerate upon approaching the destination. This limitation is overcome however with the development of the quantum drive less than a hundred years before the Sun is set to become a nova. This scientific breakthrough allows the construction of a fleet of manned interstellar vehicles, including the starship Magellan. The Magellan escapes the Earth three years before the Sun explodes, an event that is witnessed by the Magellan's crew. In the intervening years the colony on Thalassa loses contact with Earth due to the destruction of its communication abilities by a volcanic eruption 400 years after its founding. The giant radio dish is never repaired due to an ingrained tendency to procrastinate, a trait common among the Thalassans. The Thalassans are therefore unaware of later developments on Earth, including manned interstellar travel. The Earth assumes the destruction of the colony as well. 250 years after the end of Earth the Magellan arrives at Thalassa, the midpoint of a 550-year voyage to colonize the distant ice planet Sagan II. Primarily the objective is to replenish the ship's mammoth ice shield that had prevented micrometeors from damaging it during its interstellar journey. Thalassa is the obvious choice for this operation, as 95% of the planet's surface is covered by water. However, it soon becomes apparent that the human colony is still present and flourishing. Aboard are several crew members, awakened by the ship to undertake the mission, and 900,000 sleeping passengers. Among the crew is Lauren Lawrenson, a young engineer, and Moses Caldor, an eminent and wise counselor. The arrival of the visitors from Earth is a monumental event for the easygoing Thalassans, who never expected to see or hear from any other human beings. 
To the crew of the Magellan it is a welcome surprise to meet the natives and sample the pleasures of a beautiful and hospitable planet. A tale of love and tragedy starts to develop as Lauren and Marissa quickly fall in love, a situation that demonstrates the different level of social mores between the two cultures. The Thalassans appear free from monogamy and sexual possessiveness, a situation that the lonely and troubled crew quickly find out. Due to this and other aspects of the Thalassans' way of life, and the duration of the stay on the planet to repair the ship's ice shield, the crew quickly becomes disenchanted with the original objective of the mission, leading to a threat of mutiny. A more gentle and parental relationship also develops between Marissa and Moses, a man deeply affected by the destruction of Earth and the loss of his wife. Moses soon provides Marissa an insight into the culture and ways of Earth lost to the Thalassans, including the concepts of war and religion, concepts alien to the gentle Thalassans. During the course of the stay, and due to the construction of a massive plant for freezing the huge ice blocks for the shield, the Terrans and the Thalassans become aware of the existence of a potentially intelligent sea creature living in the depths of the Thalassan oceans. The Scorps are similar to the sea scorpions of Earth, only much larger. It soon becomes evident that the Scorps are responsible for the theft of metals and wire from several Thalassan underwater projects, including a fish trapping tool being developed by Brandt. The intelligence of these creatures is questioned by most, but Moses believes they may have the potential for developing into a future intelligent species. Several unforeseen events occur that shatter the dream of idyllic life of Thalassa, and also remind the crew and the Thalassans that the visitors must soon continue their prime mission, and leave the Thalassans to their destiny. The story concludes with an air of tragedy and hope, as the relationship between Brandt and Marissa and Lauren concludes, the transient nature and ultimate futility of their love revealed. Marissa chooses to conceive a child by Lauren, but a change in scheduling of the mission brought about by the threat of mutiny by the crew means he will never see his son. Brandt accepts the child as his own. The dissatisfied elements of the crew are left on Thalassa while the rest of the crew leave on the last leg of their journey. Lauren witnesses the life of Marissa and his child after awakening on Sagan II, 300 years after their deaths. Topic. Scientific aspects The novel explores one possible outcome of the solar neutrino problem, that was unsolved when Clark wrote the work and has since been explained. There seemed to be a lack of neutrinos reaching the Earth from the Sun, because scientists were only looking for one particular state of the neutrino particle. In the acknowledgments to the book, Clark states that he considered to depict the use of vacuum energy for spacecraft propulsion, a scientifically viable, but highly futuristic, technology. The novel also features a space elevator. In his introduction to the novel, Clark states that he wished the work to deal with a realistic interstellar voyage, without the use of warp drives or other fantastic technologies. Topic. Setting In the story Songs of Distant Earth there are ten known colonies of Earth, most of which have lost contact with Earth. Several planets are mentioned by name. Earth is the mother world to the human race, destroyed 400 years prior to the story due to the Sun going supernova. The Magellan was the last refugee ship to leave before the Sun exploded. The word Earth is hard for the people of Tassala to say due to its loss. Thalassa is the world on which most of the story takes place. It is an ocean world with three volcanic islands, and its own aquatic biota. The planet was colonized by a seed ship. The protagonists live on the south island of the three inhabited islands, and based on the limited physical descriptions and their names appear to have mixed ethnic background. Pasadena is a planet in orbit around Alpha Centauri A. Earth has lost contact with the colony there but it may still be thriving. 
Sagan 2 is the destination of the star ship Magellan, located 75 lights from Thalassa. It is an untouched but Mars-like icy planet, larger than Earth, with about 40% ocean and a mean temperature of 25 degrees. The atmosphere has an oxygen content 70% of Earth's and it was named for science communicator Carl Sagan. Sirius X is a colony of Earth mentioned in the story. Topic. Cross media influences Multi instrumentalist and composer Mike Oldfield wrote an entire album based on, and entitled, The Songs of Distant Earth, which was released in 1994. The album has a foreword written by Clark. Oldfield included a CD ROM multimedia interactive exploration animation software on some of the locations from the book, including the Hibernaculum. The album has been re-released in a package with the original short story, the movie outline and the CD-ROM. The ending song and final chapter of MUV Love Unlimited are both named after the songs of Distant Earth, following the theme of every chapter having been named after a relevant or semi-relevant sci-fi story. Topic. Reception. The Songs of Distant Earth received a positive review from Gerald Jones in the New York Times. Jones praised its scope and its exploration of philosophical dilemmas, the drama that interests Mr. Clark is played out on a much larger canvas. It concerns the lures and limitations of knowledge, the destiny of mankind, and the fate of the universe. 